Hello and welcome back to the tutorial series for live trading with AI UI. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about creating the AI, how to import the data set and use it. Well, in the tutorial before, we've already shown how to import data. So, I'll show it again. We choose a chart we want to export, we want to use for an, an AI training, and then we choose the script sent to AI UI. Drag and drop it on the chart and load an indicator set, a preset, and then you can change these um, settings if you want to. We have chosen this settings already, and as you can see here, um, it has been already sent to AI UI. Okay, so we take this, and first step we should do when this came over to AI UI, double click on it and change something. Right here, you have all your um, indicators here. Right here, you have the field called Handlung. It's German, that means action. Okay, and in your case, if you have freshly sent this data set to AI UI, this value is float64. But we want it to be integer64 because it's just an integer value, um, three numbers, 0, 1, and 2, and I will show you later on. Right now, let's switch up to the project. You can also download on our software. Homepage um, www.ai for you and I.com downloads, and this is the project we are talking about NASDAQ Live Trading. Okay, so first of all, we got the data creation node. Okay, that means we just drag and drop it, and we choose this data set um, we have sent from MetaTrader 4 to AI UI and choose it. So we've already done this here, so you can see the indicators and the preferred action. So um, first we do some histogram plot because we want to see um, how the actions are distributed. You can see on on the basis of 10,000 samples we got around 8,270 samples that um, are number O, that means hold, do nothing. We got 794 um, telling you to buy and 930 telling you to sell. So that means most of the cases we do nothing. Okay, that's normal. Um, you can definitely find um, an action to choose every hour. Um, if you have a look at the chart, you can. Each of these candles uh, stands for one hour, and yeah, for sure you can handle each hour and win some. But in the case of min win pips 50 and max loss pips 30, we got this um, action distribution. I would call it like this. Okay, so this is our action distribution. Now let's have a look at the distribution um, of the values from the indicators. You can see it is very different um, in range and as already stated in other tutorials, a neural net um, because of the gradient descent um, Because of the trading, because of the training procedure called gradient descent um, procedure, the neural net will learn to get more attention to values 
uh, with higher gradients. Okay, so if, for example, NMA long, the NMA stands for Nyquist Moving Average, is moving in between O and what's the maximum 8,000. Um, this movement, this this gradient, will have a much larger um, influence on the neural network training than the movement of, for example, um, delta or gradient or Beers, for example. Okay, so what we have to do to even this problem out, we have to scale our data set. So we start creating a scaling node. Node. So let's just show this. Drag and drop the scaling node. Connect the data set, and then we choose in this case min max scale from 0 to 1. Yeah, you can use the slider if you want to, but no need to do this. X is 1, that means we scale each column by itself, and then we choose the scales, uh, the, the columns we want to scale. So we select all and kick out Handlung, because we don't need to scale the actions. We got just three distinct actions, O, 1 and 2. O stands for hold, 1 stands for buy, 2 stands for sell. And no need to scale this, okay? And then just proceed. Um, then we get this result. You can see all actions are scaled in between O and 1. After that, um, in this case, we use some encoding nodes to um, create a one hot encoding for the actions. That's nothing more than just changing O, 1, 2 to. 100, 010, o, 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 and 001. It's just another form of um, yeah, encoding. There's no need to do this, but if you don't do it that way, you have to change some um, uh, at the neural network architecture to make it work. So then we are sequentializing. That means we are building the time series as I have told you in the tutorial before, for example, we got here five um, values, chronological um, order. That means this is time step one, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's have a look at how the time series is produced. Um, as I've shown in the tutorial before, we will have um, to create time series first. We got Right now we got a table, okay? That means we got a table of values. Um, each line stands for um, a collection of different indicators and one time step. First time step, second time step, third time step, and so on. And we need to put several time steps in one row. So that means we call it windowing. We create time series. That means for example, five time series in a row, then the next five time series in a row. But um, the value, uh, the window is just moving ahead one time series at another. Then we take this five, we take this five, we take this five, and then this five. Okay? So we are moving um, until we have reached the end of the data set. You can see this. We got here um, 32. 1400 um, examples and after sequentializing with a time window of 100 we got um, 100 less 99 um, exact okay so but we got a lot more columns okay that's easy we got we got nine um, features as inputs that's gradient, delta, volume, exit time ratio, day of week, beers, balls, awesome, anime long, and that's it. These are nine indicators um, as our input values. We want to train the neural network to predict from these nine values in a time series um, what to do. And the last three um, columns um, define our actions. So. That means we got 100 um, time, uh, um, distinct time values, 
for each of the nine um, features. And that means we got 900 columns, and the last three columns are the actions. So that's easy, right? Um, and we have just put one value after another in one distinct row. Okay, so far for sequentialized. Next thing to do is we want to resample. Why do we want to resample? Because I've shown you before the um, distribution of the actions isn't even. And um, the neural net is going to learn more not to do anything, because there are much more examples of doing nothing, than um, acting. Okay. And in this case, we want to get the algorithm more sensible to um, actions. So we have to fill up with oversampling. Um, this empty space right here, we will um, multiply the, uh, the amount of samples for the action buying and action selling until we reach the same amount of actions like for doing nothing, keep holding, right? So that means we do some resampling, we oversample, choose um, which targets to sample for, and use classification and just proceed. That means we make from, we come from 32,301 um, examples to over 80,000, yeah? Because we just multiplied the amount of um, actions dedicating to uh, buying or selling. So right now, the distribution should be more even. Then we split up the um, data set, train well split, um, 90-10. And we, in this case, we stratified it. That means that the training data set um, has is also um, evenly distributed with the same amount of um, buying holding and selling uh, cases like the validation set, okay? That means um, it's not just purely random. That could lead to pick up 60% of all um, examples from hold and 20% from buying and 20% from selling. It will evenly distribute um, depending on the targets, okay? So, then we choose an architecture, and we go to training. Um, this architecture is just freely designed by me. Um, feel free to experiment with this. The architecture has a big influence on the outcome. This is the part where you can um, try out different architectures to find out the best that might um, serve as best prediction, uh, predictional model, okay? Um, yeah, just feel free to um, check this out. Let's go back to the project. Okay. So, we want to train a model. Um, I've just given it the name. Um, I've chosen 30 epochs, um, but I've stopped, as you can see earlier. And I've chosen a batch size of 100. If you use a higher batch size, training is much faster. But um, batch size means, in this case, 100 samples will be trained, and then the weights of the neural net will be adjusted. So the higher the batch size is, clearly the training process will be faster. But um, have in mind that this also might lead to more generalization, but not a good form of generalization because um, if you um, put 100 examples through the network, the changes might be much bigger because um, of the few um, examples than if you put through 10,000 different examples. The outcome might be more, um, yeah, medium mare, uh, more like, yeah, not so high changes in the weights because um, 
the output is more a mean of all the 10,000 distinct examples. So if you use a smaller batch size, the training is taking longer, um, but it might end, end up better um, yeah, representing what you want it to uh, represent. So we shuffle the data, don't choose metrics, uh, the learning rate is small, and yeah, we choose a loss function of categorical cross entropy. For that, I have to say, if you, um, I can have to go back to the architecture. This is a case of probability. Okay, that means um, we don't want to predict a, a value, an exact value. We don't want to predict the stock market price. We want to predict a probability that this action might be the best to pick in this situation, in this um, occurrence of the pattern. Okay, so the last layer here, dense three, stands for we got three output um, features. Okay, and as I stated before, we got 900 input features, 100 um, time steps, as you can see here on the reshape node, 100 time steps, that's the window size, and nine features. Okay, nine um, indicators, and that means 900 as input value. So, and then we got as output um, three um, columns, action O, action one, action two, means holding, buying, or selling. And we choose as an activation function softmax. Softmax um, is especially graded for cases like this, where you want to put out a probability. You can also choose sigmoid. If you choose sigmoid, the sum of all probabilities is not 1. It can be, but it don't has to be 1. That means you can end up with a probability of 60% buying, 60% selling, and 10% holding. Okay? But if you choose softmax, you will end up in each case with um, a sum probability of 1. That means, for example, 20% hold, um, 70% percent buy and 10 percent sell so this would be a strong recommendation for buying okay so that's it if you want to choose um, to let out this encoding you will end up with label encoding just o one or two instead of like i did it this hot encoding and you can do this, but then you have to choose um, as loss function, not categorical cross entropy. You have to choose sparse categorical cross entropy, as well as um, in the architecture, you will have to change the last layer to um, one unit, and softmax is okay. So that's that doesn't change. So if you have trained the model. Um, you are good to go. You can find it here. I've trained some different models. And then we will be done with this tutorial. You can click on the next one and find out how to use this model then to make predictions into the future or use it as um, a backtest algorithm to check first if your algorithm is good in generalization and finding out um, if you can earn money with it. So, thank you.